Let's do a little bit with wild cards. Okay, I'm going to type a period, H O P, and then I'm going to type a wild card, the asterisk. There are two wild cards. One is the asterisk, that means any, any characters if they appear. The second one is the question mark, that means one single character, and it has to appear. Okay, so here the, the asterisk is probably going to be the most common one you're going to want to use. So I'm going to type, I'm going to hit enter. Okay, now I'm going to show you one other uh, tab here, and this is in the words tab. The words tab at the very bottom, it's an expansion of the command line. So when you're using wildcards, this words tab is extremely helpful because it's going to show you all of your search hits. Okay, so since I, I typed H O P, and the wild card, it shows that I have lots of different words. Hope, hoped, hopes, hofney, wouldn't have thought of that one. Uh, hoping, hopping, hopeful, hopeless, hofra, and hopper. Apparently the word hop doesn't appear, because that also should, should come up. Okay? So those are the words that you have. And I'll say, I want to find, it. well, where did hofney appear? And where would I find that? I'm going to hit, I got to click on this word, and there's all five occurrences right there. And you can actually go down through your list here. So I click on hope and find them all. There's hopeless occurs one. So you just click on your words and find where those occurrences are. Okay, back to the two words hopping. Remember the star two here? The search results window shows that there's two occurrences there in that verse. So, so the wild card can be very useful. You want to find all forms of a, of a word. And by the way, all these things I'm talking about here, are working with English, I'm getting the concepts across. It works the same in Greek and Hebrew also. In fact, more powerfully in, in many ways. Hmm. So, um, we're going to find, let's see, a period, star, ing. I want to find all of the, you know, all these gerunds with the ing. Let's see what we have here. Oh, I forgot. Okay, oh, I wouldn't have thought of that. Um, so an offering, saying, bring. Okay, there's another one I wouldn't have thought of. According. <coughs> so it can be in the front of the word, it could be the back of the word, it could be the middle of a word. So let's type a period. W O M. Let's type star N. There's woman or women. <coughs> okay, so that can, can work in the middle of words. So these, these uh, wild cards can be quite useful. Now let's try with the question mark. I'm typing a period, H-O-P, and I'm going to type just a question mark. Remember we had all sorts of different lengths of words when we had the asterisk? Now let's type an end, press enter. All I have is the word hope. Now I'm going to, I'm going to use my up arrow command line. That brings up my previous entered search. And I'm going to put another question mark after it. The question mark, the character has to appear. Okay, I'm going to hit enter. And now I find hoped and hopes. But the word hope does not appear because I have to have a character there. So it's the exact number of characters. Let me walk again. Let's see if there's that. I type a third question mark. And now I have Hoffney and Hopping and Hoffer and Hopper. I'm sure that's accidentally significant somewhere. <laughs> but. But you can see how these characters can, can work. Um, and the same way as the asterisk can be anywhere, I can do the same thing here in, uh, with the, the question mark. Go back to W-O-M and uh, question mark N. And I also have woman or women, because there's one character. But it requires there to be a character. OK? One of the nice things about computers is you can, you can find things you didn't know were there. They were always there, but you just didn't know to think of looking for them. But searches like this could do that. Is there a way to compare English translations like that? Because where we're looking at the NRS, the ESV, the NIV, the NIVO might vary. Yes. Um, you can do it manually. Uh, if, you're, if you're searching, like, say, the HOP asterisk, for example, and you want to then see, okay, I'm searching in the NRS, and I want to see it in the NAU, I want to see it in the ESV, um, there, which is, well, let's, let's run it. I'll show you an example of how you might want to do that. Um, so, period HOP, and this is in the NRS, and hit enter. Okay. I'm going to turn off the 
the KJV Strong's number here that doesn't change the screen too much. Uh, but I have all these different occurrences here. Okay, and now say Hoffney, I have five. I want to see, is this the same in the other translations that I have displayed here? I'm going to click on Hoffney, and now I have my verses here. So here's Hoffney. Yep, Net Bible has it there. So does KJV, so does ESV. So you can use your browse monitor to look through it. I know that's not exactly what you're looking for, I know that. But sometimes that's probably the fastest way to get to it, frankly. You know, a term that's not, in, not occurring a lot of times, you can just kind of glance through it and say, okay, yeah, it's the same here. Or maybe hopping, let's go to hopping. It occurs twice. So it's hopping here in NRS, but, uh, but here in NetBible has the Yellick locusts. Uh, that was my second guess. <laughs> um, here the KJV is a canker worm. <laughs> and uh, the ESV has hopping locust also. So, um, so, so here, is, the easiest way is just to look in the browse window. Okay. Um, there is another, what's called the text comparison settings tool in the browse window that will help you with that. You could also create word lists and do some comparison. Uh, but we're getting with the other stuff. So we have the wild cards. So you can use the, the asterisk, you can use the, the question mark. Um, I want to show one other thing, because you notice we have these brackets here. I'm going to take a period, we're still in the NRS, and use the example WOM, and say I know I want to look for woman or woman, and I want just one of those two. Maybe there's other ones. Uh, Maybe there's an O, there, there isn't, but if there was, see, I don't want to find those. I only want to find the A or the E. I'm going to type, but I want both of them. So I'm going to type the bracket, A and E, and another bracket, and then the N. And then hit enter. And now it finds, it finds both of them. So the brackets can be useful for putting different things in there as well. It's a grouping of things. So say you want to exclude something else, the bracket can be can be good for multiple items and yet still excluding something else. You only want those specific items. Okay. 